Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Keep Exploring Games, and it is called The Dutch East Indies. It is for one to four players, about ages eight and up, and it is going to be 45 to 90 minute runtime in the game. You're going to basically be exploring the Dutch East Indies, and the way you're going to be doing that is by utilizing your ships. Ships are going to be able to hold cargo and gold, as well as other different spices, and your objective in the game is to survive, as well as to acquire all the different different spices that you can. You need two of each different four types of spices, including you can utilize uh, these uh, types of, I guess, pepper to uh, count as wild uh, for your uh, purposes of trying to collect all four. If you can collect all four sets, you're going to win the game uh, before anybody else. There's additional different little expansions, which we'll be talking about along for the Kickstarter because there's a bunch of little uh, bonus expansions that could be utilizing the Kraken or utilizing different forts or different little oasises that kind of get you trapped in them. A lot with treasure and other events but I think you get the idea let's go ahead and take you down to the board and show you everything you get in the game and then we'll talk about how to play so here we have the game the Dutch East Indies and everything included along with six mini expansions now the original game already came out and had a basic version and a deluxe edition so we'll talk about that first in the base version of the game you're gonna be getting everything you see here minus these six expansions and there's two expansions that are gonna be in these cards here such as the events and the treasures there's also another expansion that's going to include crew members. There's an expansion which includes settlements. There's an expansion which includes this reef area here. And then there's also an expansion that inc includes these forts over here, which you can actually go ahead and take over as well. And finally, there's this little crack in here. Uh, in the base game, you're going to be in these little ports here, along with your main base, your main forts, uh, your main ships, as well as all the different uh, types of spices. Uh, you're going to be getting your basic sets of things, like of course the cargo and the money. But I'm using most of the deluxified pieces here, as you can see. These are the little cargos. These are the uh, nice uh, metal coins here. These are little upgrade pieces you can get by bringing them back and forth here, uh, which will increase your ability to do more damage, as well as range, as well as your uh, attempts to roll. Uh, there are pirate ships here, which are these, and there are also your main ships. There's a larger one and a smaller one, which is going to be on this board over here. This is the main board of the game, which you'll be utilizing for two different things. Your big ships, which are in the green for this specific player, and then your uh, smaller ships, which is going to be the clear white. These are the main green ships for the green player, and they also have the basic version of ships, which are going to be these ones here that you can go ahead and use either one, depending on if you got the deluxe version or not, uh, but I'm just using the deluxe version of ships here. Um, and you can clearly see the, the difference between them right here. As you can see, there's the, uh, the these are the more uh, ones you put together, and this is the more plasticky version of the game. Uh, every version of the game is different as far as how many players goes. There's one, two, three, and four players. In a four-player game, you're utilizing the entire map. In a two-player game, the map cuts off a little, little more, a little less than half. Cuts off right here, and you're going to be setting it up differently depending on how many players. Along with your larger ship in front and your smaller ship in the back, then you'll have two different options. You can choose five, five or six for your cannon value, and a range of one or two depending on how you set your cannon value. With five, it's two. With six, it's one. Um, and then, of course, your damage value is one as well. You're going to also get a number of different uh, coins as well as cargo, depending on the number of uh, how many, uh, what player you are. So, for instance, the first player is going to get more cargo than the second player is going to get. Uh, or, sorry, the first player is going to get less cargo than the second player is going to get. And also, depending on the number of players, how many cards are going to go to each of these spaces. The closer you are to these spaces, the less cards there are going to be. And the, depending on how many expansions you put, into the game as well. I'll just have you go ahead and look at the rule book to see when you pick up the game uh, where you're going to be placing everything because there's quite a bit to explain for the placement of the game but just know that the closer the locations are the less cards and the farther away the more cards and in addition uh, the additional expansions that you're going to be putting into the game are going to include things like uh, the basic game stuff which is trading cargo for certain things the treasures and of course the events which look like this once you uh, continue once you draw it you're going to read it and continue you playing um, and that's pretty much the idea of it for at least for the setup of the game so let's come up and we will then talk about how you take your turn and then what happens as well as these little pirate ships and how it kind of goes as well as winning the game so on your turn in the game you're going to be simply utilizing both of your ships and on your board it's going to tell you how far you can move with them how much you can carry as well as being able to tell 
uh, how strong your cannons are, which is going to be included with a D6 roll against anything else that you may be fighting. There's also an interesting aspect at the beginning of the turn before you start using your boats. You're actually going to move pirate ships utilizing this die here. There's an eight sided die that has north, west, south, and east, as well as the north, west, south, west, so on and so forth. Um, and there's going to be these pirate ships placed on the board based on the number of players of the game. Uh, those guys are going to be able to attack players that are adjacent to them. They're also going to be able to remove cargo from the board that is left stranded on the sea. They're basically just nasty because even if you do beat them, you get nothing for it. So you want to try and avoid pirate ships as best as you possibly can. They are random in their movement. So after you move pirate ships, then you're going to simply move your ships and you're going to follow the rules based on their movement on your player board, which can increase as long as you're upgrading them throughout the game. Uh, when you go ahead and use your ships, you can simply choose to do actions first and then you can choose to do movement or uh, vice versa. You can use as many actions as you want on your turn, but you can only move once. And an action is going to be simply to basically look at the top card of one of the island decks or wild islands and then try and accomplish that goal. If you can't, you put it face down again and you're going to have to go cart back stuff to your island and gather the required resources and then come back and do it again. You'll be able to go back and forth between the islands, but you can only look at the top card per island, per ship, per turn, which means that you're not going to be able to look at two if you've already gained one. Event cards are separate though because those are basically going to read, do whatever it says, discard it, and then continue your turn. And you're only going to be able to gain one card uh, per time you do that. Anyway, after each of your ships have taken their actions, they're then going to pass your turn. The next player is going to get to go by simply starting to move the pirate ships around and then taking their actions. The objective, of course, is to get two of each of the four different spices and bring it back to your main base. And if you can do that first, you're going to win. But there is a lot of things that prevent you from doing that. There's going to be Krakens that are going to be moving around the board potentially, as well as the ability uh, for, for your opponents to come to your base and take certain spices from you, as well as gold. And not only that, but you're going to run into things like the reefs and whatnot for little expansions that can kind of freeze your ship in place. And also, of course, bases that are in, in the water that can attack you if you move adjacent to them. It's a resource management game that has a little bit of combat and a little bit of strategy as well included. Included. Let's go down, I'll take you below, and I'll show you a little bit of how a turn works as well as how the player board works as well. Okay, so we're back to the game now. We're gonna go ahead and show you how a turn kind of works, and it's pretty simple. We're starting with green over here, and before we start, we're going to go ahead and move the pirate ships. We'll take one of these die here and roll it starting with the main ship over here, south, and we're gonna be doing north, uh, east, south, and west. So in this case, he's gonna go this way. In uh, As far as the pirates are concerned, their movement uh, is only based on the one space. It doesn't really matter in which way they are turning, uh, but in our case it will. The next player is then going to get to go, or the next uh, pirate I should say, and he's going to go southwest, which means he would go over here. Now, just before we go ahead and do that though, if it were to have said uh, west, it were to go this way, he instead couldn't go that way, so he would actually go the opposite way. Another thing to note is if a pirate ship lands in one of these reefs here, he's going to be stuck and he can't attack whenever a player goes adjacent to him. However, on his next turn, if he doesn't roll a one or a two, he will be able to escape and simply move the direction of um, directional dies ability, but in general he's just going to go right there because that's how we actually made him move. Uh, these are only going to be used for the pirate ships. For the main ships we're actually going to go ahead and look at our player board over here. The player board over here shows the cannon strength of each of our ships, our big one and a small one, with a 5 and a 3 strength. 5 is your base stat along with when you roll the die it's going to add, so if you roll a 5 and a 5 that would be 10, and pirate ships have their own strength too, so our main big pirate ship here I think is either a 5 or a 6, but if you rolled that you would add that as well. Player with the most uh, pips is going to be the winner in a combat. Uh, you would also look over here, which is going to be your movement or your sails. Uh, the big ship gets a three movement and a small one gets a two. And then finally, cargo over here. Your large ship gets seven cargo and your small one gets five. Cargo is represented pretty easily. A piece of gold is one cargo. And one of these little uh, little cargo or little uh, shipments here is worth one as well. And you can stock up to your maximum allotted. Uh, each of these spices is also worth one. If you ever have more cargo than your ship can carry, you have to dump it into the ocean. Uh, so and then now we're going to have this character move. He can choose uh, this player. He can choose either of these two ships. And he's going to be moving his max movement speed if he wants one, two, and three. Uh, each of these little islands here are going to have ports. And it will show on the specific uh, pieces here. 
here. So for instance, this, this tile over here shows two ports, and if you land in a spot with a port, you can't, you're not gonna be attacked, or you can't be attacked, especially by pirates. Uh, so in this case, he is going to end his movement right here, and then he's gonna take his action by drawing one of these cards and looking at it and seeing what it does. This is an action card, and it says, you get the top card from the crew deck, and you may employ it on your ship without paying its cost. So you're gonna go ahead and take this specific expansion here, and it tells you the cost of the crew member, which you're gonna ignore for this card here. It says the ship is immune uh, for all negative direct effects uh, from events, so that's pretty good, so this card gets discarded. This is you're gonna be employed, so you're gonna put this next to you, and you're also gonna take one of these crew members with the same color, putting one of them on your ship, and the other one on the card, so you know which ship has which of these specific uh, abilities that can stay on your ship. Uh, action cards uh, or event cards do not count as a cargo card, so you can go ahead and draw another one. Oh, and we got another event. All players immediately get a free upgrade for one of their forts. So in this case, this is his fort here, so maybe he's going to increase his range by one, making his fort a little more um, uh, available to do damage to ships that are in range. And let's try and draw another one, another event card. Let's go ahead and move on and find something, something else. They're all events, wonderful, exactly. Let's say he drew this one here, because there's just all event cards here. Uh, in this case here, he's actually going to be able to trade three cargo for two pieces of gold and one nutmeg spice, which is necessary to win the game. So before you leave your port, you're actually going to want to fill up your ship with at least some uh, precious cargo that you can use for trading. So in this case, if he had uh, stored three of these little cargo bins in his ship when he came over here, he could then unload those cargo, uh, dumping them into the supply pool over here, and thusly he would be able to gain gold as well as nutmeg, which you'd take it from over here, along with uh, the gold from the storage area here, simply putting it in your ship, which you can use for later turns, as well as taking your cargo or your spices back here when you want. Remember, you're only limited by the amount of storage space per each of these guys here. The next thing uh, is this guy can go ahead and move. He can go one and two, and movement is pretty interesting. You can move uh, in any of the adjacent space spaces, provided that it's not backwards. So if he was here and he was facing this way, he could move here, 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 or here, but he can't move back this way at all. So he could simply go one and two, and the pirate ship wouldn't be able to hit him because he's actually at a port space, which would then allow him to draw a card. Now let's say he actually brought some stuff with him. Let's say he brought three of these little guys here, along with, uh, let's say, two gold, just in case, and we'll flip over one of these guys here. Ah, bam! Treasure. Treasure is simple. You're just going to get to get these pieces and put them into your ship. Remember, you can only hold, store so much, so if he actually was full like he is now, he would dump them into the ocean, and then after that he would discard this card. Treasure cards do count as a basic card, so he would not be able to draw another card there. And uh, that is basically how the game is going to work. You're going to be trying to get back to here, and you're going to be trying to get two of each of the four spices, along with the fact that these uh, black uh, these black peppers here are going to be wild. Not only only that, but there's some additional things. Like I said before, these things here stop movement as well as stopping movement for you, provided that you don't uh, roll high enough. And whenever you move adjacent to one of these guys here and you're not out of port, they will attack you and it follows the same rules as the other forts here. You can attack your opponent's fort by going adjacent to it, and then you can take either gold and spices from your opponent by beating them if you're in the same space uh, as their fort with your ship. So there's a little bit of PvP combat. If you're adjacent to your opponent, you can also fight them, provided that you both roll a die, adding up your cannon value, the person that wins will be able to win that fight, and you'll gain certain things. Uh, when you take your ships over to here, there's different ports on this big island here, you can do a number of things, and it tells you over here. Up here, it's going to tell you that you can trade a gold uh, for one of these upgrades, which will allow you to bring it back to your base here to upgrade these different pieces for your fort. You could also choose to spend two shipments for one gold, one gold for two shipments, and any spice and two gold for any spice of your choosing. So this has a large variety of things you can do but it's also in the middle of the board and it's surrounded by the pirates. Uh, this space here just indicates you'll be able to draw uh, uh, cards from this area until, what's interesting is all the cards get removed, in which case the wild island is now available for you to be able to place down your forts, and it's going to cost you normally three to place one of these guys down here, and when you do that every single turn of yours, you'll be able to add a supply to it, which is slowly going to give you more supply stock, which you can go ahead and utilize to gain more cards and more valuable spices, so that's kind of cool. Um, and not only that, but uh, the final thing is it states down here that you'll win if you are able to get all of the different spices, two of each. It tells you on the new market islands what you can do for an upgrade, and it tells you how much it's going to cost for cannon range and damage, which are in these three. And then on new empty island actions, you can buy a crew member, which is pretty cool when you go to an empty island, you can buy crews, you simply draw one of these guys, see what it is, and if you
you can afford it, you pick it up. You can only have two crew per ship. And if you don't want it, you shuffle it back into the deck or you can build your settlement, uh, which is what I showed you previously. Um, and then the last thing is the Kraken, which is actually, bam, right here. I just saw that just before we set up. And the Kraken is this guy here. If you draw this card, you can simply place a Kraken uh, anywhere that doesn't have an adjacent um, a day adjacent island and not on a player's ship. And that will actually count as a ship. So it'll, it'll, it'll move around. If it hits somebody, they take three damage and this goes away. When you take damage, your ships are going to uh, go down these little tracks here, which will allow you to either take do less damage with your cannon, uh, be able to move slower with your uh, sails or be able to carry less with your cargo. When you're at this big island as well, you can actually uh, trade your gold to go up. So if you had three gold, you can actually go up to six for cannon. If you had uh, three gold, you can go up here, up here. And then finally, a three, four, and five, which is a lot of gold there. That's going to be 12. You can be able to actually move four spaces a turn with your big ship. That could be pretty good. So there is upgrading to your ship and to your forts as well. But that's the basic idea of the game. you would be doing all these things, but your main goal is to get those spices, bring it back to your island, and be the first person to complete the objective. If you can do that, you win the game of the Dutch East Indies. All right, let's come up and I'll talk about it and tell you what I think. So what do I think about the game, the Dutch East Indies? Well, the first thing is I really do like the deluxe content it came with that I got to try out. Uh, one thing about the deluxe content is, of course, that it has a smaller carrying capacity uh, compared to the actual regular, uh, regular ships that you could be using. And in which case, it is a cool novel idea, but the novelty wears thin halfway through the game where you're now getting a lot of stuff and you can't really fit it all in here. I'd actually prefer to have player cards or player... Uh, uh, boards that had for, you, know, you have for each of your ships that you can place the stuff on. That way it's easier to take off and put on because I have big fat fingers and trying to grasp little things that get stuck in here can be kind of uh, a, a tedious at times. Um, overall though, the quality is very nice. I like the metal coins added for the deluxe edition, but I also don't mind the regular ones as well. In fact, all of the components for the basic aspect of this game is really nice and works pretty well. And I also mind mind this less than I mind the uh, plastic one because there's more space, but I'd still prefer a player board regardless. Also placing cards in the island, I don't think it's necessarily needed, but I would have actually liked a big board where you can just place all of the cards down in each of the slots for the islands. That way you can see all of the artwork in the game because I do like the artwork in the game. Um, but overall, it is a very well-produced game. It is very vivid, very um, lifelike. I enjoy the... I just enjoy the artwork for the pirate game. It's got a good theme attached to it, and it does play out throughout the game, which is very nice. There's a lot of upgrading you can do in the game, but a lot of things in the game are actually not necessary. You can just kind of pick and choose what you want to do and how it's best going to, to help you throughout the game. There's a PvP combat, but it's not also really needed. Your objective is obviously to go around and gather as much as you can and avoid taking the damage, avoid dealing with the pirates, and avoid dealing with the players if you can. Uh, sometimes it's going to be needed, especially with a larger player game, you're going to be coming into a lot more conflict, which is also something I'd suggest playing a larger player game for this. Four players is definitely recommended in my book. The two player variant is not so not too bad. And there is a singular player, player variant as well that plays very similar to the other players, um, but has certainly different rules. Uh, the board widens with more players, which is nice as well. And it pushes you to get to the middle of the board because eventually the cards are going to run out or the shipments are going to run out from the main islands, but you're still able to use those basic islands to put settlements on to gain more cards cargo and more stuff that you can utilize to uh, progress throughout the game. So you don't have to go all the way back to get cargo. You can simply go to your settlement. So that is a nice aspect as well. Um, what's interesting to me is movement in the game. The pirate ships don't follow the same movement of the players. They just simply roll the die and they move that specific direction. And if they hit next to you or adjacent to you, you're going to take damage. Um, what I would actually prefer with movement is instead of just being able to move left, uh, right, up or top left or bottom right or top right, and, you know, basically the the entire front section and not the back um, because what happens is you have to spend one movement to turn your ship to go backwards I'd rather just be able to move anywhere you want it just felt like it would make more sense that way but I guess that just nitpicky on my end overall it's a nice resource game that has a bunch of really interesting mechanics and uh, for the base game itself is it's fun I like it uh, let's talk about the expansions okay so the first one is the gold and the second is the uh, events so we'll talk about those together because they're basically the same thing you basically put them in together put them onto the board and if you draw the gold or treasure you're going to be just getting those things and it's chance that you get them or not and then the events are negative and positive as well as the fact that you're just going to draw a new one um, if you want a little more random aspects to the game that would be something I would add if you want more strategy and less luck I would take those out of the game uh, these little uh, reefs here are interesting as well because they're going 
going to allow you uh, to try and move around them or have the chance to go through them at the cost of potentially getting stuck. They also slow down the pirate ships because they can't attack you when they are in there and they might not even be able to escape. It's a nice little added uh, aspect to the game. The forts are pretty cool as well. You can obtain them in the game and that can actually benefit you because you can attack other players with them, but you also have to dodge them as well. Uh, the only thing I got confused with those guys is it feels like you can kind of zigzag around them as long as you're on a fort space. And I don't know if that was intended or not, but it's also a very nitpicky thing for me. Um, another thing too is, oh, oh is, the, is the crew members. The uh, crew is awesome. I really like this aspect of the game. Being able to go to the locations and pick up crew members is thematic, it works well, and I like the fact that you can pick them up and they give you some benefit, whether it's plus one sail, plus one cannon, or you're able to uh, gain more supplies to your little locations or cities. Uh, they all do different things. You can carry two in each ship and uh, it, it works. It's a very nice little added mechanic to the game. And the final one is this little Kraken here. He is basically an extra pirate ship. He makes it a little more at a difficulty of the game. If I didn't want to run events, I would still actually probably just put this guy in somewhere randomly in the game just to add him to make the game a little more cutthroat, which is fun. Overall, the game's good looking. It's got a great theme and it has a lot of cool potential with all the different expansions. There's definitely gonna be ones you don't wanna pick and choose from. I probably didn't, I probably wouldn't necessarily pick if I played again. Uh, I wanna play four players. Uh, I think that's the, where it hits the best. Obviously more players is more fun for me in this game. Uh, and also I'd probably run everything but maybe the forts and maybe the events. I don't know, maybe just cut a little bit of the randomness out. But it all, it did work well, you know? So it's, it's one of those things where, it, I guess it depends on how I feel at the moment as to what I want to do. Do I want it more chance-like? Do I want more cutthroat with the, uh, with, with the Kraken? Or do I just simply want to play the base game? Overall, a cool little game, something you should definitely check out. If it sounds like it's interesting to you, go ahead and look at in the description below, the Dutch East Indies, along with all the expansions and the uh, extra, extra cool like bonus stuff you can get for the deluxe edition take a look let me know what you think in the comments below